In this presentation, we're going to apply overhead to jobs. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our job costing dashboard. We're going to start off by going over to our Excel file so we can see an example of what our objective will be. Here we are. We are on uh, EX 1.2. If you want to enter these into the into the Excel file, you can go to 1.20 in the blue area. But we're going to be over here in the 1.20 and just look at the example. So the next thing we have is we've got these items where we're going to apply out the overhead. Now note that as we apply out the overhead, the typical thing you would think in a in like a job costing problem in in a uh, bookkeeping uh, problem or a textbook type problem is that we would put the the all the overhead all the things that we couldn't directly apply to the job into a a overhead type of account and then allocate that overhead type of account out at a later point in time uh and but however what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at that factory overhead and, and do our best to allocate it as we enter it into the system as we incur then the overhead we're going to have to give some kind of allocation process so that that would suggest then that we're going to have some, we're going to need some kind of allocation measure uh, as we incur the overhead so that we can record it to cost of goods sold otherwise if that wasn't the case if we could not do that then we could do a similar process as we did up top we can we could record the overhead into like we did with the raw materials but instead of raw materials we put it into the factory overhead type of account and then we can allocate it out using a similar method that we did uh, for for the factory overhead using something that they would call like a predetermined overhead rate so that's going to be the essential problem with overhead so remember the essential problem with overhead is that we couldn't apply it directly to a job therefore we have to use some type of allocation method to apply the overhead um, to to the jobs we can't directly apply it we don't know exactly what jobs they go to so we have to use some kind of allocation uh, method to do so we're going to be allocating directly as we incur the overhead simply to the cost of goods sold and as we do so applying it to the job so everything that everything that falls into that bucket everything that can't go into overhead will go into uh, can't go into the job specifically we have to put into this bucket or consider and think of it in terms of overhead which we're going to use as some kind of allocation method so, uh, for example, number 16, or we're on uh, this item on the 20th, indirect labor paid and assignment to uh, factory overhead. So if we have indirect labor, that would be a situation where uh, we, we can't assign it directly to the job because maybe we have someone working in the warehouse supervising or something like that, and they're supervising everyone, and therefore we have to allocate their time in some way to a job as opposed to being able to to assign it directly to a particular job as is the case with direct labor so in this journal entry is always going to be the same we're going to put it into the cost of goods sold and we're going to credit cash we're going to consider this person kind of like a contractor again and and we would debit cost of goods sold and credit the cash then when we put it into the overhead or into the jobs we'd have to use some kind of allocation method to apply it out to the job so this allocation method, we're going to say we're going to apply it out by 1933 and 48 uh, to the open jobs. And you can see this is our we can see different methods you can use for the allocation or how you're going to figure out which job to, to apply it to. Some jobs will be bigger than other jobs. And that's so if you look at the estimates, then you could basically of your of your open jobs or something like that, you can you could try to figure out what the best type of allocation will be considering the jobs have different sizes it won't typically be a one-third 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 in our case with three jobs allocation but rather uh, have some kind of method and activity driver for the larger jobs the larger jobs usually you would think would be consuming more of the kind of overhead type of allocations the more precise on the overhead you get the better your you know your allocation will be but you know that's going to be the details of it so we're going to be using the 15 the 19 the 33 and the 48 for job 14 15 and 16 respectively so we're going to take that amount and allocate it out according to those percentages and if we do so and we add uh, these three items up then it's going to add up to that uh, 9380 the 9380 which of course uh, is going to be the amount here it's not that amount hold on a second. let me add those up again the 2660 the 4620 uh, and the 6720 adds up to the 14,000, and that's the amount we're looking for so that's going to be we're going to have a similar method for for all of these kind of overhead type of of problems 
So for example, the that was the indirect labor. If we had the amounts applied to overhead for indirect materials, this would be materials that we that aren't the large materials that we can apply directly to the job, but but maybe think of like grout or glue or things like that, that we're gonna buy in some and we're not gonna be able to apply them directly to the job, but we'll use some type of allocation method in, in order to do so. We can use some kind of allocation method and just note some of the problems with this type of thing. If you bought like glue and you bought a year's worth of glue or something like that or grout or something like that, then obviously it'll, it might be serving jobs into the future. That's why you might use some kind of allocation method and you might then apply it first uh, into, into the factory uh, overhead and then use a predetermined uh, factory overhead rate to apply it out to the particular jobs. Or, or again, you can try to figure out how you want to apply it out to the jobs basically as you go. So that's that's going to be your your methods that you can have to think of. Journal entry is the same. It's going to increase the cost of goods sold. More specifically, the cost of goods sold related to, to that factory overhead piece, the, the glue that then you're going to have to apply out using some type of method. The method that we're going to use when we apply out the glue will once again be taking that and applying out with some type of ratio percentage. We're going to say the 19 the 33 and the 48 for our practice problem so we can go through all the all the other uh, overhead areas and that's going to be something like utilities if they're utilities on like the factory then we do all of our jobs or do some part of our jobs within the factory then we would have to then apply that out in a similar fashion same kind of journal entry and then apply it out using our, our percentages anything that's like factory rent anything that we use in our, our factory our production area then that's going to be a similar process that we'll have to apply out depreciation if it's depreciation of the equipment that we use on various jobs and we, we have to uh we don't know how much how much time was applied to each job we're gonna to have to then similar method for the allocation of that as well so let's think about those in excel so we're going to start off with this one and this is going to be the uh, indirect labor so we'll go for the indirect labor and let's go back on over here we're going to make a new and we'll make an expense item. So we're going to make another expense item for the indirect labor. I'm going to open that up and we're going to say this is going to be go, going. I'm going to say it's a contractor again. Uh, contractor 2. But it's a similar concept as we did with the contractor 1 when we talked about direct labor. If it was payroll, in other words, uh, you can kind of do a workaround here where, you, where you'd basically zero make that zero expense to allocate it out. We're going to assume it is a contractor here that we're actually paying and therefore it's going to be decreasing the checking account. Then uh, the the date is going to be the 20th. Let's make the date the 20th. So I'm going to say plus, 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 plus. And that's that's it. That's all the pluses we need. And then this is going to be cash or check. And down here, I'm going to set up an item. So we're going to be... Uh, add in an item. So I'm not going to go to the category. I'm going to close the category. I want to go down to the items and we're, I'm just going to set up an item for indirect labor. So I'm going to set up another item. We don't have one yet. I'm going to call it indirect labor and say tab. It's going to ask us to set it up. I want to make it a non-inventory item so that I can use those double-sided or two-sided items. I'm going to then copy the name. I'm going to say copy that name. We're going to bring it on down to the description and paste it there in the description. We'll paste it down here on the purchase information as well for the expense account. If we see the expense accounts within the cost of goods sold section, you'll recall we had overhead. Now, I would like to make another subcategory of overhead, making overhead basically the parent account and now make this a subcategory for the indirect labor. Note this is just for informational purposes here that there's going to be a problem in that we should have the indirect labor as the sub account of overhead. We're actually going to enter it shortly uh, incorrectly as a sub account of the labor account. That's not where it should go. It should be in the overhead. I'm going to keep it there instead of going back and editing it so we can see it go into the wrong sub account. Then we'll take a look at it on the income statement and then we'll see how to come back over here to the chart of accounts and fix uh, an error pro like that and see what the difference will be on the income statement so if you want to set up the account properly and not do that adjustment then you want to make it the sub account of the overhead account not the sub account of the labor account to do that i'm going to make another account here i could just type it in i'm going to i'm going to call it uh 
indirect labor and then tab and then it asks me to set it up the ex account type is going to be cost of goods sold and then uh, labor we can keep that that's fine that doesn't have much effect that detail type and then that looks good uh, I want to make it a sub account this is kind of important I almost missed it I want to make it a sub account however of the cost of goods sold accounts for labor so that's the one that should do it then let's say save and close and save and close so that was kind of a lot we did there because we set up an item and a uh, an account at the same time and then I'm gonna I'm gonna break these out by job now so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back on over to our jobs over here where we have uh, the 2660 which is job number 14 so let's do that one first so 2660 and that's gonna be billable so check that off for job number 14 and then and then I'm gonna do this again indirect uh, that's spelled wrong indirect labor and this is gonna be for the amounts of we're picking up the 4620 4620 so we're gonna say 4620 this is going to be billable so we'll say it is billable and this is going to be job number 15 job number 15 let's do it again we're going to say then we have indirect labor and this is going to be for the amount of picking up the next amount it's going to be down here this is going to be 6720 the 6720 so let's pick that up 6720 and that'll be billable That'll be for job number 16. So there we have that. Uh, and then if I scroll up, note that again, if you process the payroll, you could do the same little trick here that it would already be in wages. I'm not going to do this now, but I'll just to show you if, if you went to the employee information up top or wages, like the other expense account, salaries and wages, assuming the payroll went there and then put in a negative 14,000 then you would basically take it out of one expense account put it into another expense account have no net effect and be able to apply out this information to the jobs in that format so that's one method that uh, you can use for that what's this going to do when we record it i deleted that so delete that if you're practicing going to the practice problem it's going to then uh, go to the account for the cost of goods sold account here based uh, driven by these items and it's also going to be applied to the job or project that we're looking at. And it's going to be decreasing, of course, the checking account. Let's take a look at it. Let's say uh, save and close. And then we'll open up our financial statements. So let's go on down to the reports on the left hand side. That's where the financial statements are. And the financial statements include the balance sheet. So let's open that one up. That's an important one. As we know, I'm going to hold down control. I close the hamburger and then I'm going to hold down control. And then we have the, uh, the the checking account. Let's go into the checking account and see what's happening there. And the checking account, we have this 14,000 now decreasing. If we select that 14,000, then we're gonna see that 14,000 decrease there. Let's close that back up and scroll on up to the top again. Scrolling on up, scrolling on up. And then the other side is gonna be on the income statement. So I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate the tab. So let's go up and hover over the tab up top, right click on it, duplicate that tab, put in the balance sheet on the right hand side. We'll go on back to the left hand side to do other stuff by opening up the hamburger or like opening up the hamburger so that we can go down to the reports again, open up our second favorite report or other favorite report. They're both really good, obviously. They're like the financial, that's gonna be the PNL the profit and loss the income statement gonna then close up the hamburger up top and then what we have in the profit and loss is going to be the new thing we had we're looking at the new thing here it is going to be the there it is the indirect labor the indirect labor of that 14,000 so now we could scrunch up the cost of goods sold and it's at the 582 that of course matches the 582 on the balance sheet down below for the net income number and then if i go back on over 
We can also expand the cost of goods sold. And then we've got the direct, we got the labor and the material, basically direct labor and materials uh, at this point in time. And notice I should have put this indirect labor into overhead and not labor. So this should be only direct labor. The other should go in overhead. So I messed up, I messed up on the item. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and, and show us how to fix this. So, I'll, so I'm gonna right click on, on this tab up top. I'm gonna duplicate this tab. Then I'm gonna go back to the tab to the left. I'm gonna open up the hamburger. We're gonna go down to the, let's hold down control, scroll back down a bit to get uh, back to that 100%. I'm going to go to the accounting area down below. If we go to the accounting, we're going to take a look at our chart of accounts. I'm going to close up the hamburger once I'm in the chart of accounts. Up top, I'm in the chart of accounts. And if I scroll then down, here's where the problem is at. So when I, when I go down to the labor and the cost of goods sold section, I put the indirect labor as a sub account of the labor. And that's not right. It should be the sub account of the overhead account. So it should be sub of the overhead. So let's edit this. I'm going to go on over and this is this is totally fixable. I haven't ruined anything here. We're going to go to edit. And then I'm going to go to the cost of goods sold. That's going to be the, the account type, the sub account, not labor here, but overhead. So let's go ahead and change that. And where's the where is the overhead? Cost of goods sold. We've got the materials and then we have the overhead. So there it is. That's the one. Let's do that. That should fix it. We're going to say save and close now. And there we have it. So now let's just check it out. So now overhead, it's a sub account of overhead. Now let's see what happens. It should change the uh, P&L for us. Let's go back on over to the P&L, the profit and loss and update that. So I'm going to go back up and just run the report again. And then I'll close up the old hamburger. And let's try this again. Let's try focusing in on this again. So now we have the cost of goods sold and we have the labor, which is just direct labor. We got the materials and then we have the overhead. So then we have the overhead. Now we have our three major uh, components, the, the labor, the materials and the overhead. If we were to expand uh, the, you know, the materials that we've got the detail in there. And again, same kind of thing with the overhead. We can expand it and now have the other types of, of items in, in that one as well. So that little detour uh, took a little bit more time than I was expecting. So let's go ahead and stop it here and then we'll continue on with the overhead next time. So uh, that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.